Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode by Mining Stores Breaking Down the Charts. Today, we're going to be looking at predominantly Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're going to have a look at the fundamental factors that could be affecting the price in the next coming two, three, four months. Um, and we're also going to be looking at some of the minor uh, altcoins that we've been looking at in the last episode as well. So let's transition across and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So again, things can look a little bit noisy at the start, so I'll try and break down things a little bit further. Uh, but basically, we've got this yellow kind of block period here. And this is what I was describing last week as a bit of no man's land. When we're above this block, I feel like we're in bullish territory. When we're below this, I feel like it's quite bearish or oversold. The, the way that we got that area, it was basically from the 2018 um, crash uh, where we saw you know, Bitcoin reach one of its lowest prices uh, and then it broke out from this area again. Uh, and then also during the COVID-19 crash, we've seen it crash below that period and, and come back through. So basically what I want to look at at the moment is coming into the more shorter time frame after the Bitcoin halving, uh, we've seen Bitcoin kind of just bounce between the 8,000 or 9,000 level uh, and the 10K mark. And it's what people are calling a bit of a stable coin at, at the moment. Um, not literally, obviously, it still is very volatile. But as we can see previously, Bitcoin has been far more volatile and at the moment it's consolidating quite well. Um, I personally think that Bitcoin does look to be kind of on this upward trend still. I'm still quite bullish on it. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the things that I think could affect uh, Bitcoin's price and, and could see what we call like a flash crash. Um, but for the moment, uh, you know, all, all things aside, I think Bitcoin is still looking quite bullish. I'd like to get above this kind of purple uh, trend line here. Uh, we're sitting below it. We're also sitting below the 20 day and the 50 day moving average. Uh, again, if you guys are not tracking these moving averages, you can put it on by heading to the indicator section, uh, typing in moving averages. And I use the uh, moving averages multiple. OK, that brings up this little setting over here. And you can put in your 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, and 200 day moving average. And you can change the colors for those as well. So I know my 20, 50, 200, 500 um, day moving averages. I know the colors what, of what they are. Um, and that's how I know that the purple is the is the 20 and green is the 50 as per this. Okay. So again, yeah, we're below the, that 20 and 50. I'd like to see us kind of break through that and potentially break along this uh, trend line here. Um, but I'm going to try and um, first describe an event that I think could cause this whole market to kind of crash down and why you need to be prepared for that. And then I'm also going to describe um, some events that I, I think could actually um, have this, this market continue in the upward trend. So what we need to be aware of is this crash here, you know, was when COVID-19 really came to fruition in, in, in a global um, scenario, just out more, more than just outside China. Um, and obviously, you know, the stock markets, the Dow Jones uh, crashed heavily. Um, and, you know, people were pretty, pretty worried, obviously. Uh, and since then, we've seen this kind of recovery. So Bitcoin, uh, sorry, wrong chart. Bitcoin has uh, had a similar kind of scenario. We obviously saw this flash crash and then now we've, we, we've recovered. Uh, but I do fear that, you know, leading into September time, I mean, we're just about to lead into uh, the next um, uh, period of earnings reporting. Uh, the previous period of earnings reporting um, didn't really have the full, full um, months of COVID um, included in it, uh, whereas this next one, next earnings period is going to be largely, um, you know, time um, from from COVID-19 period where, you know, a lot of businesses are shut down. So in this next earnings period, if we see a real, you know, some bad results, um, worse than expected or just bad across the board anyway, um, you know, I do fear that the, the stock market could take an, another dive uh, and with it, no doubt Bitcoin's price will take a dive too. Now, a lot of you um, would understand why that is. Some of you may not, but uh, the simple explanation for that is it just comes down to what we call a liquidity pinch. And if the stock market takes a dive, there's a lot of people that have positions that they need to or want to sell out of for it, whether they're in a margin call or they simply just are fearing it's going to go down further. Um, and they need to get that money from somewhere. So bigger investors that are holding at higher risk assets like Bitcoin, they may sell them off um, to fund these positions or buy back into a traditional kind of investments. So that's it's one reason of many, but it's a bit of a, a broad explanation of, of why uh, a flash crash in the, in the stock market could correlate to a flash crash in, in Bitcoin's price. So that's what we're going to call risk on between July and September, this earnings period. Um, and also around September, particularly for Australia, uh, we're going to see a lot of this stimulus um, support 
start to wear off uh, and, the, and you know, people are going to have to fight for themselves a little bit more. Uh, I think that's when we're going to, you know, hit the true reality of how bad um, COVID has really been for on, on an economic scale. Um, and we, you know, across the board could see Bitcoin's price um, start to, you know, take a hit or, or potentially on the back of the stock market. Okay. So I think we're leading to a little bit of risk on. Um, that's obviously one side of the story. The other side is that I, th I do think that fundamentally Bitcoin's price um, is still potentially a bit un undervalued or has a lot more room to move north. And the reason I go into that is I want to explain um, the Bitcoin production rate, okay? Um, so what we're looking at here, again, things can look a little bit noisy, but let me break it down for you. Uh, we've got this kind of this banner here uh, where this bottom red line across the board here is the cost uh, to produce one Bitcoin, including the hardware as well as the electrical cost. OK, so this is the cost. Now, when we saw the Bitcoin halving come in on around the 11th of May or on the 11th of May, sorry, uh, we obviously have seen the, the reward for per, per miner. Um, per day halve and so the cost um, to produce has doubled okay if you're getting half the reward for the same amount of work and then your cost of production is is double what it used to be and, and so that's why we've got this major spike up here and that's what this kind of purple banner is, is um, representing the bitcoin production cost now putting that into perspective to bitcoin price you know the miners are actually running running at a at a loss. They they would rather buy Bitcoin at this price rather than producing it at fifteen thousand. They could just buy it at ten thousand. Okay, so this gap you know ultimately needs to close. And there's two factors that may ca cause that gap to close. Uh, one is the network hash rate producing. Um, and in this chart here, we can see that's definitely not happening. In fact, since the Bitcoin halving, we saw a massive dump, um, which miners turning off their miners. And obviously there's less miners on uh, for the miners that are still on, they're getting a higher award because they don't have to share it with as many other miners. And so obviously that took a massive dump, but now it's just escalated quickly and gone back up. Okay, so we're almost at all time highs. This is actually quite a bullish signal for me. This tells me that Bitcoin miners are, are very, you know, long, long, they're looking at the long term and they're going, yeah, okay, I might be producing Bitcoin at a higher, higher price than what it is right now, um, but I'm quite bullish in the long term price of Bitcoin. So if I can mine it today uh, where it's worth $9,000 and sell it when it's up at, you know, $30,000, $50,000 at higher prices, um, then, you know, I'm, I'm actually okay with that. It's a long term vision. So that on its own is kind of a fundamental bullish scenario for, for Bitcoin. Um, I think that it is undervalued from a, a you know cost of production point of view. The other thing that could kind of close this gap is is price actually increases. So if the price of Bitcoin pushes up higher, um, then they're getting the same amount of Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin's worth uh, more. Okay. So those are the two kind of factors that I think you know are going to close this gap. Either either the network hash rate decreasing, which doesn't look like is happening, and miners still have that long term vision, um, or the price actually increasing. So yeah, just to bring that back to your trading, um, you know, it's important to be aware of these kind of things. That's probably one of the most fundamental factors uh, for Bitcoin is, is that production rate. Um, and it looks like it's undervalued and it, and it kind of needs to increase to so subsidize those miners. Now, the other thing that we can look at here is in general, you know, Bitcoin's price seems to be bouncing up and down. And from a miner's perspective, you know, I think the reason for this is because because the miners are producing at a, at a higher cost, what they're actually needing to do is buy and sell their Bitcoin at, at 10, you know, sell it at 10,000, buy it back at 9,000, sell it at 10,000, buy it back at 9,000 to make up the difference uh, in, in the cost here. Okay. So yeah, that's a, a major factor that I believe, you know, I think, um, you know, Bitcoin, you know, is, is undervalued. The, the risk obviously is if, um, you know, COVID gets a bit worse and the stock market crashes, you know, between now and now and September, um, that Bitcoin's price could actually come down. Um, um, despite it being undervalued from a production point of view. Uh, but that kind of gives you a bit more perspective and, and something else to look into, okay? Um, overall, I still think quite bullish. Where would, I would like to get above this 50-day moving average, um, but those are the two major things that I'm looking at is, is the cost of um, production and, and the stock market. Just, just keeping my eye on this, making sure it doesn't uh, dump. Now, bring that to your strategy. Things that you might want to do is just making sure you have a little bit of cash on the side. You're not all in 100% on, on Bitcoin right now, um, if that's the only thing you're trading. Um, you do have a little bit of cash on the side to, to pick up some Bitcoin if it does have that dump effect. Other thing you can do is be hedging. So using things like FTX market or any CFD platform and actually putting some shorts uh, of the equivalent exposure. So if you're holding $10,000 worth of Bitcoin, you might want to put a short on for $10,000 and that'll make sure that you break, you're in a break even position minus some fees that you'll pay to hold that contract. Okay. Moving on. Um, 
let's have a look into Ethereum. So obviously, um, Ethereum is probably one of my favorite coins, if not my favorite from you know, a developer's point of view and, and contrib contribution to the space. Um, there's more developers on this project than anywhere else. It's a smart contract um, project. Uh, and I think it's got huge potential to, to, to advance in price in the, in the next five or even less years. Um, so a lot of the, the Ethereum that I do acquire, I'm just holding. Now it's great news for Ethereum. For what people don't know um, is the, or for those people that don't know, sorry, it is a proof of work coin at the moment. So you need a miner to mine and that's what keeps the, the blockchain alive. But it is moving to, to proof of stake, which, which requires a much less intense computer or expensive computer. Um, but you need to stake 32 Ethereum um, in order to get rewarded. Okay. Um, that's kind of your contribution to the network staking rather than spending a lot of money on hardware and electricity. All right. To keep the ne network secure. So um, yeah, bring that back. Obviously, if, if people need to buy this 32 Ethereum and, and lock it up, that means there's going to be demand to buy the 32 Ethereum and also a reduction in supply because it's been locked up and, and people can't break that stake, other, otherwise they won't get the reward. Now, when is this move going to happen? Uh, Ethereum 2.0 uh, was meant to happen in July. Um, it's been alluded that, you know, for obvious reasons, COVID and, 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 and more. Um, that that is probably going to be pushed back into later end of the year. So risk on would be if this keeps just getting delayed, that's going to be seen as a bit of a failure and, and not a good thing for the Ethereum project, not hitting targets. People get a bit iffy about these kind of things. Um, but when this event does come in, you know, later in the year, hopefully, um, I do think that we will see quite a, a, a price increase um, in, in Ethereum. It's going to a, bring a lot of attention to the project. It'll be the most talked about thing, just like the Bitcoin halvening was was um, at the point in time. A lot of people um, have a long term view of, of Ethereum. Uh, it's a HODL project that they want to hold for a long time. And so people will be buying up that 32 Ethereum and locking up the supply. Uh, I do think we could get quite a, quite a price increase. And as I said, I'm at the moment what you will call stacking up um, my Ethereum. OK, so. Still in this upward trend, which is nice. Not much more to comment from a technical analysis point of view things. Um, I had a bit of feedback from the other video that people wanted a bit more fundamental analysis. Uh, and so that's what I'm trying to provide today. A bit more fundamentals to, to what is actually making the price go up and down as opposed to just looking at candlesticks, okay? Um, so yeah, that's the main points that I want to cover for Bitcoin um, and also Ethereum. Now we can look into a couple of the altcoins that we've been uh, tracking along with. So first of all, we look into Loki. So Loki has had a bit of a dive in price, which is yeah, a little bit unfortunate, but this is cryptocurrency. That's kind of what happens. I would have liked for it to, to maintain this upward trend and, and continue going up. Uh, but nevertheless, I actually had a call with Jagerman, um, which is one of the head developers at Loki just the other day and tried to cover off a couple of points about what you know what to look for, for um, with Loki coming up in the future. Without getting too technical, there are some major changes coming towards the code. Uh, and that's actually going to be, um, you know, changing things uh, where you actually be able to pay pay someone and be able to transfer that payment instantly. So currently, the way that uh, Loki is set up, um, unfortunately, what happens is when you transfer someone, you've got to wait a certain amount of blocks um, before that payment can then um, pass on. It's I think it's about 15 or so minutes, uh, and that can be a bit of a pain for some people. So it's called Blink Payments. That's the upgrade that's coming through. Um, and yeah, I think that is, you know, that that is probably one of the most painful things for myself as a Loki user. Um, that you know, say you know, Cal, my business chance partner transfers me you know 10,000 Loki um, and I, I'm in a bit of a rush and I actually want to pass that on to someone else to pay for things um, you know I've got to wait 15 or so minutes it's just it's just not efficient um, so I think that's a major improvement uh, and it, and blink is probably one of the major um, fundamental aspects of the project um, so an upgrade to that could be um, quite bullish I think if it all goes well uh, I think it's the next fork that that will happen so that might be in a month or, or, or two um, but yeah I think that's you know really good news uh, for blink also the Loki net is, is, is traveling along quite well. Um, they're really starting to break down some of the code and, and you know, not take shortcuts with it is kind of what Jagman was saying. Um, you know, they're really looking to have a really clean project here, which sometimes takes a bit longer, uh, but the end value is, is um, you know, more beneficial to the whole ecosystem. So yeah, I really like Loki. It's still earning a really nice yield of around 2% um, per month, which is 24% per year. So for those in the De De DeFi space, that, that's quite a substantial amount out um yeah really really good project good privacy coin uh, i recommend you kind of you know get involved with the mining store discord
Discord and ask questions in the node discussion channel. That's where we predominantly talk about Loki, um, but definitely worth, you know, getting a one node at least set up uh, and earning that 2% um, per month and holding a coin that could have um, quite a lot of uh, future value. Okay, probably one of the best privacy coins, a fork off uh, Monero, um, which is a great coin as well. Probably the, the, the king of privacy, we'll call it. Um, so yeah, definitely worth keeping your eyes on and at these lower prices might be worth uh, picking up some yourself. Okay. Um, Dodge, not going to really comment on too much, kind of one of those ones, I'm just waiting for it to, to pump out. It's really more of a technical analysis trade, picking up this trend, it seems to be sitting here. For those of you who aren't in Dodge, you actually probably potentially could, you know, enter around here. It's at the lower end of my um, buy, buy box. Um, so I, I think that's, you know, probably good to enter. I've been holding it since this last um, pump I sold out and rebought around this area here. Um, so I'm just going to wait for that one. If it starts to trend any lower, I may think about um, getting more exposure at, at these levels. And any lower than that, I'm going to have to really start looking into, you know, do I want to hold this project for the long term? Um, and is and is it worth it? But yeah, happy to hold this one for as long as it takes to get that next pump. And I'll probably exit out um, around this top area up here. Um, RSR, whew, it absolutely took off. I did comment on my last video that I was going to sell just after, uh, and the price was sitting uh, right here um, at about 71 uh, Satoshi there. So, yep, I did sell. Uh, I probably got it wrong a little bit, but at the end of the day, I absolutely nailed my entry. So there was no disappointment in my sale there. I was watching this downfall here and I bought back in on, uh, let's just make sure we get it right, the 78% fib line. Um, and from there, I sold at this red mark here, which was about 163% gain. Um, you know, after the video, it did keep on rallying and rallying and rallying. It went all the way up to about 250%. But again, um, we don't go broke taking profit. So I was quite happy with that. Um, again, it's kind of did crash back down. I thought about buying back in, um, but I think it's time just to, you know, let things uh, cool off for a bit. Um, yeah, there's some things that I'm looking at with this project that I'm not overly happy with at the moment. And I just want some more clarification with it um, so I'm kind of waiting for it to you know have a bit of a, a pullback if it does I'll definitely comment on on the forthcoming um, uh, breaking down the charts episode uh, so just hold off for this one personally is, is what I'm doing um, and I'm gonna wait for that re-entry looking into handshake one of the coins we've been mining still kind of just tracking along this lower level similar to dodge I'm just waiting for um, you know some positive price action before I comment any further happy just to hold this bag that I have here if we still get this land side down uh, potentially I might think about selling out and what I call cutting my losses um, but you know the, the the coin launched at this price here we're pretty close to the coin launch price um, so I'm just going to wait for some product positive price action on that one uh, tell a TRB so there's some cool things coming up from fundamentally Fundamentally, for this project at the moment to mine TRB, you need to stake 1000 uh, TRB tokens. Uh, that's actually going to change in the next six weeks. I actually had an interview with the Mandalore, who's one of the um, top uh, developers for, for TRB, if anyone's in the Discord in there. Uh, really cool guy. It was really nice to meet him. Um, and, you know, he shared some things about TRB with me, um, you know, why they have this kind of disputes um, situation. Um, Again, don't want to go too much into the, the technicals with everyone, but basically the one thing I do want to comment is at the moment you need a thousand TRB to um, stake a node um, so you can mine so that you can mine the project. That's actually going to move to 6,000 in the next four to six weeks, okay? Um, so again, similar to Ethereum, uh, if more coins are being staked, that means less coins are in circulation and that usually has a positive price impact. Um, so I, that along with the actual mining emission curve, um, for for trb um, i might actually try to get that up quickly if i can coin market cap and this is just a, probably a good demonstration of how i go about finding these things as well so i can go to the teller project and then go on to their website here and on their website if i just open up their white paper for those of you that don't know the white paper is where you'll get all of the um, information about the introduction background of, of, of a project if i scroll down to just have a look at how the mining emission curve actually works as you can see here we're currently sitting uh where are we so we're in the 720 we're sitting at around about this this point here, okay? And as you can see, the, the mining reward has been reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing quite a lot. And that's starting to even out a little bit, but it's still got a fair bit more reduction to go, okay? So I do think that there, um, you know, the, obviously the, the less 
uh, TRB going into the ecosystem, the more price should go up because there's less supply. That along with staking, um, you know, the staking requirement going up. I do think in this next, you know, six weeks or so, we could see quite a big pump in TRB as people scramble to get that coin to actually stake and continue to be able to mine, okay? Obviously, the big big miners will already be preparing for this and, and are getting those stakes ready, um, you know, but yeah, I do think, yeah, there could be a bit of price in increase uh, coming for TRB. So keep an eye on this one. Definitely look to buy, um, you know, on this bottom bottom end trend line or even down here if it does break through. Overall, I like the tokenomics for this coin. Uh, and I do think even from a trader's perspective, not just a miner's, it's, it's worth keeping your eye on. Okay. Um, looking into Digibyte, Digibyte's doing really, really well. I'm happy with Digibyte. Obviously had this massive rally in the past kind of three or four months uh, at a height of 432%. Um, and, you know, at a at this lower point here, uh, still 225% high. Recently, it's just gone up from, from that lower point here up to here, uh, you know, a solid 20, 20% over the past coming weeks. So it's still got this positive price action. It was listed on Binance Exchange. That was what this pump was here. A bit of a, uh, you know, well, a lot of, Good news for Binance, uh, for for Digibyte, sorry, being listed on one of the largest exchanges obviously attracts more traders. Some people don't want to set up an account on all these different exchanges and will only trade if it is on Binance. So that was great news. It also could be listed. It's listed as potentially going on Coinbase, um, which is another big exchange. It was in its in Coinbase's shortlist. So yeah, a lot more volume obviously coming into you know as soon as it was listed on Binance. Look at this volume bar here. Um, one of the largest we've seen in just in quite a while, and that shows you know the power of how many traders there are on Binance really. Okay, so again, once it comes on Coinbase, we could see you know both the average um, volume and a big pump like this in volume, and it was it would be more than likely uh, positive news if if that happens. So let's see how it goes. Obviously, there's a lot of room to move from highs of 2017, which are quite ridiculous to look at. Um, I, I don't like to look at them too often, but even you know the highs of um, early J January in in 2018, I think that's a realistic target of where um, Digibyte could actually hit. So if we were to push that high from here, um, that still could be another pump of about 200 to 80%. Okay. There's been a change in um, the, the project lead, Jared. Um, he actually left and that's opened up some doors, obviously, with a listing on Binance and potentially Coinbase. Um, so nothing wrong with Jared from, from my point of view, but I do just think the project needed a bit more of a change. Uh, and clearly that's paid off and we're starting to see these um, good partnerships, such as listing on, on um, Binance, which was actually a free listing, by the way. Um, one of the members of the Mining Store Discord brought that to my attention. Um, and that's, yeah, really positive news. It shows that Binance themselves actually quite like the project. Okay. Um, leading on, Nervous CKB, again, a, a coin we're mining, similar to the other projects I was saying, just kind of waiting for a pump or positive price action before I comment any further. And then Xenon, I really like this project. Um, my node in it uh, was quite expensive to set up, but it's starting to pay off. Um, again, if we start seeing any higher uptick, um, I'll probably cover a bit more on the fundamentals of this project. Um, Jack Dorsey potentially could be behind it, which is a Twitter, uh, CEO of Twitter um, and, and uh, Crypto Square payments. So yeah, keep your eye on this one, definitely. And um, I'll be commenting, you know, if, if, if we start to see further pumps. Other than that, guys, hopefully uh, you enjoyed that one a little bit more on fundamentals behind projects rather than just looking at squiggly lines, I suppose. Um, so if, if you want to comment in, in the YouTube channel or comment in the Discord, if you're in there, private message me, whatever's best for you um, on what you would like to see more of and what you enjoyed, um, just please let me know. Other than that, take care and uh, good luck with your trading.